Good morning, folks. We're going to begin today looking at Lovejoy from December 2011. Came up and around the backside of the sun, rebrightened after perihelion, and watching a CME goodbye from the sun. When we pull up the C3 frames from ISON, we see similarly a brightness cut off around perihelion, a rebrightening afterwards, and a CME goodbye. These are unlike the dying sun divers that can induce flaring beforehand or upon impact. It does indeed also appear that ISON is already refading, suggesting it's a shadow of its former self. CME fired at ISON was done so in line of sight only. The CME went off the backside and likely did not affect the comet at all. Quickly kicking to the RSOE. Red tide causing some issues in southern Florida. It happens occasionally, but this is a severe and longer lasting event. China is less than 48 hours from launching their lunar probe. The goal is to give a full detailed surface map of the entire moon. This is the latest out of Penn State, sharing to give you all sides of the story. This crew hypothesizes the opposite of what we've been purporting here in the Starwater series and often on the channel. They say we need to be more conservative in our counting of potentially habitable planets in the habitable zone. But this is in harsh contradiction to the liquid water we find everywhere in our own solar system, both on planets and moons, often hidden deep underground. And it ignores the water factory tendencies of stars and the latest not-so-conservative estimates from Kepler about there being an astounding number of such planets. By the way, Chapter 3 of Star Water is only hours away. Coming to Australia, where a blocking high-pressure cell is dominant, funneling moisture around it and ending up colliding again at New Zealand. In Europe, the focus switches to a growing low pressure connection between north and south cells that dips the air down from the cooler northern regions. In the Americas, we'll need both high and low pressure to explain the temperature delta. A counterclockwise low is reinforced on the eastern right side where it touches the left western edge of a clockwise spinning high pressure cell, both pulling north in the middle yanking the heat straight north along that narrow pressure convergence. How narrow? Enough that the areas on both sides will still be cold enough for significant snowfall. Precip over Africa on the measurement mission? Got some more in the hail zones. Brazil and the surrounding areas continue to see isolated downpours. I'd check their flood risks. And as you look at Asia, there is a relatively new animation sequence available for Japan specifically. Remember that the measurement mission is a NASA and JAXA cooperation, so it's not entirely surprising. It's immediately the most detailed views we get. GOES is showing solar flaring continuing to hit the floor. The sunspots look ready to rock, and if I hadn't been watching a solar magnetic shutdown for two years, I'd be incredulous of their quiet. Closer examination reveals large umbras with separated magnetics, not a single delta spot to my eyes. Dopplergram shows the intense power associated in the confined regions. Solar wind shock continuing until a bit ago, and speed and density on a rising stride until this morning. KP index shows that instability may already be waning. The sensitive electron flux is unwilling to calm down just yet, however. While that energy begins to integrate in the Earth system, the geocentric opposition of Venus and Jupiter is continuing. Looking at the magnetics affecting Earth, you can see two positive sections box out a negative red. This occurred this morning. The cause is converging and potentially canceling magnetic fields turning in towards Earth. Looking back to the morning news from November 24th, we peaked out the quake watch, including that night with the Iran uptick. Now the quake instability shifted south along that fault line and you could draw the line of shaking down to the seven pointer that occurred that night. Now after the watch lasted another day, we dropped the danger slightly on the 26th, down below 50% uptick likelihood on the 27th. Lack of factors, ice on and Thanksgiving kept me from doing a Thursday watch score, and last night we dropped the watch even more. Since that 7-pointer, there hasn't even been a 6, but now an equatorial coronal hole is turning in towards Earth. It is not well represented on the magnetic models we can pull from Iswa and Gong, as often happens when these crest the limb. Today we should get some better data, and the Quake Watch score will begin to slowly rise once more. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.